fois, on va, euh, on va aller au bout de la plateforme. Sentries, did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Hey, eh, mais j'avais pas vu ça, ce chemin là. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Et la question c'est est-ce que je peux sauter Non, là je vais mourir aussi. Je vais mourir aussi. Par contre, on a bien vu ce qu'on. Ouh, les cartons, je pense que je meurs. Écoute, on va déjà aller voir là ce qui se passe. Oh. Oh. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. Shall so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. Ok, c'est la version du bureau qui s'effondre, c'est pas ça? Ils en parlé dans la fin alternative, la fin troublante. What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording. It was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. Ah. Now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire. Il y a un truc que j'ai pas fait et qu'on va faire maintenant, c'est euh, prendre le l'élévateur, là le monte charge, et puis euh, se laisser porter jusqu'au bout. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone Sorry, else is difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone yeah, you trucs aussi, hein. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. 
If you can truly Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. J'essaie les puces de touche, mais ça marche pas. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. On va essayer de pas appuyer. Voir ce qui se passe. J'appuie sur d'autres touches. Bon, y'a rien qui se passe. Hein. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, was, everyone in the building, had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought <coughs> terribly. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. <laughs> As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous oh, room ça, room bureau là, with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. <laughs> How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Si je vais faire, du coup, je vais essayer de faire le contraire de ce qu'il fait. You see? Can he just not ha, tell me? Il m'a baisé. How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself?
On va pas appuyer du coup. c'est qu'il se passe rien je peux pas savoir si je suis obligé d'appuyer ou pas allez j'attends encore 15 secondes 10 5 ok j'appuie je pense que je ne peux pas pas dans la façon dont je veux qu'il soit But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... <laughs> I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, bullshit. White, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now 
that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. there you'll take the door on the left back to the correct ending the story will have resolution once again and you'll be home free in the real world bullshit now remember all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would that means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task just follow my lead and you'll be fine all right <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Bon, je pas le choix, frère. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it... Well, it's worthless now! And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. <laughs> that means choosing responsibly and always oh, for your first. story first. For your first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Faut que je force. Ah, y'a rien qui se passe. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly. Il bug de plus en plus, donc il y a peut-être moyen que il faut que je continue à forcer. Up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <coughs> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Mm. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That bon, means j'ai l'impression que ça n'aime pas beaucoup. Always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <coughs> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, <laughs> Stanley sure. walked upstairs to his boss's office. Eh, c'est plus la salle de bain. Porte verrouillée. Oh. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Requin nocturne 115. <laughs> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Je vais vraiment faire le débit et le dire à vous. Sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Okay, fine, mm. you're not gonna do it, <laughs> but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Middle! Wow! The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. Ah la 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 la. Stanley, whatever 
J'ai fini ce jeu de psychopathe. Psychopathe. Énorme. Hein <rire> Non, c'est une dinguerie, c'est une dinguerie, c'est une dinguerie. J'ai fini le jeu. Pour moi, j'ai fini le jeu, c'est bon. Waouh, quel jeu de psychopathe. J'espère que vous avez bien aimé, mais en tout cas, c'est un, de... un délire de... de malade, de ma boule. Mais euh, ça vous retourne le ciboulot, franchement. Ouh Allez, ciao, ciao tout le monde, à la prochaine. Again, I won't be part of this. I'm not good. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. It was okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stand, and there it is. The last Stigley Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here, and now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. 